Well, mentally, he's completely focused. I don't think he even knows what's happening, you know, with the Fury fight and, and everything like that. After the Tyson Fury fight, I said to him, did you watch that? And he said, what? I said, the Fury fight? He said, no. He's so focused on Alexander Povetkin because people in the game know what kind of fight this is. You know, if you look at the Ring magazine, the independent rankings, it's Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, Alexander Povetkin. We can't get two, we're fighting number three. And with everything that's going on and the circus around him and the people demanding these fights and those fights and the negotiations, this, I believe, against Povetkin is the toughest fight of his career so far because it's a banana skin, not against a guy who has a chance of a lucky punch, against a seasoned fighter who is an Olympic gold medalist himself, who only has one defeat on his record, a loss on points to Vladimir Klitschko. He's a former world champion himself. He's a very, very good fighter. You know, and it's just going to be a great night of boxing. We've got Luke Campbell against Yvonne Mendy trying to rematch him for a shot at Mikey Garcia and the WBC title. You've got Lawrence Acoli against Matty Askin for the British Cruiserweight title. A big fight to be added to the card next week as well. And Joshua Povetkin is a brilliant, brilliant fight. Now, over 70,000 tickets sold already at Wembley. Now, we're heading for a full capacity there. It's going to be a brilliant night. But for Joshua, mentally right now, the only thing he's focused on is Povetkin. Because for us, it's not about one fight. It's about a legacy. It's about five, eight, ten years. And these are the kind of challenges that you have to overcome to be a great, to lead you to those undisputed fights. And Povetkin will probably be watching the circus going on around Joshua right now and think, what a chance. What a time to fight Anthony Joshua. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Mm -hmm. With all the outside noise going on around Anthony Joshua and who might be down the line, do you have any concerns going into this fight, given the quality of the opponent? Well, I had concerns without the circus, because this is a tough fight. This is the third best heavyweight in the world for the Ring Magazine rankings, and this, that's the independent body. And whether you agree with that, you have to put him in the top five, regardless. So this is a tough, tough fight. So I've got my concerns going into the fight. People talk about you know, Povetkin's a bit smaller. Josh doesn't like those kind of fights. He's got a great left hook. He's very seasoned as well, a lot more experienced than Anthony Joshua. So... The concerns are there regardless, but yeah, of course, people talking about what's next. And I think he feels as though he made that mistake against Parker. He started thinking about the Wilder fights, thinking about the next one, without thinking about what was in front of him. He got the win, but you know, I think part of him wants to go back to the old crash, bang, wallop Anthony Joshua that people love to watch. One of the most fearsome punches in the division with speed to burn. And I think you're going to see a scintillating performance from Joshua at Wembley on September 22nd. And a great fight. I think there's going to be ups and downs. I think it could even be similar to the Vladimir Klitschko fight. But I think you have a very dogged, determined Anthony Joshua that is ready to put on a show for the British fight fans on September 22nd. If he gets past Povetkin, from your perspective, you've tried to make the Wilder yeah. fight and it didn't happen. Tyson Fury is obviously going over to, to fight him at a date to be decided. What do you see in the future for AJ? Well, we want the Wilder fight. You know, when we talk about legacy, legacy is becoming the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. We sent a contract to them on all the terms that they agreed. We've been there, we've, we've had this conversation a million times, but they won't come back to us. You know, they're not even coming back saying, we don't like that and that, but we like this, could you change that? So there seems to be no urgency, no desire for them to make that fight. I don't believe the Wilder Fury will necessarily happen in November, December. We'll see. But what I do know is they can sign a contract. They can negotiate a fight now for Anthony Joshua if he can beat Povetkin. If he can't, and I've said this before, the Dillian White fight looks very, very likely. But 100% our first choice is to fight Deontay Wilder. And it's going to become more and more difficult. So all we're asking the Wilder team is just come back to us. And we can't make the fight if you won't communicate. If you don't like something, just tell us. But we've been down there. We've had these discussions. The absolute focus is Alexander Povetkin, September 22nd at Wembley Stadium. The best and most exciting heavyweight on the planet, Anthony Joshua. We'll put it all on the line again for your entertainment. 22nd fight, and he's already fought Povetkin, Klitschko, Takam, Parker, Dillian White, Dominic Brazil. The list is endless. 22nd fight. You know, the other guys had 40-odd fights, but he's there. He's willing to fight all these guys. So get behind a national treasure. Get behind the greatest heavyweight, and he's British. He's ours, and he deserves all the support from us.